Hi, welcome to my video where today we're going to be talking about what happens when you have two secants intersecting inside of the circle or when you have a secant and a tangent intersecting on the circle or on the edge of the circle. So we're going to take a look at these two cases. They're actually pretty easy guys to go through and they're kind of common also um, with what's happening just a little bit. And I have another video for you about where they intersect on the outside of the circle, a completely different case. But let's take a look at these and should do pretty well. Okay, first thing we're going to take a look at are secant and secant intersecting inside of the circle. This says the measure of angle AED, so here this angle, is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc, so AED intercepts this arc AD, plus the arc that's created from the vertical angle. Now those arcs are not congruent to each other, the vertical angles are congruent to each other, but this is what we do. So the measure of angle AED is equal to one half the sum of the intercepted arc and its arc to its vertical angle. Interesting. Um, next one, a secant and a tangent. Now this one's actually a little easier. When you have a secant and a tangent, this angle AEB, this big angle here, is simply just one half of the arc, ADE. Okay, so I would figure out what the measure of this arc is, and that angle is simply just one half of it. And that should seem kind of familiar to the other lesson that we've already done about this topic. Let's take a look at some practice problems. So at the top here, um, I'm sorry, on the left, at the left here, we're going to look at two secants just simply intersecting in the center of the circle. So here I'm looking for the measure of angle X, and I have the intercepted arc of 80, and then its opposite arc from that vertical angle of 40. So this just follows our exact pattern of the formula. X is equal to one half of 80 plus 40. Kind of like makes a bow tie looking. So when you're finding that angle within the bow tie, you simply add up the two arcs and then cut it in half, and that angle would simply be 60 degrees. Now, the difference between that problem and the next problem to the right is that this angle X that we want to find is not the angle that kind of creates the bow tie. And here you've got this 50 and this 160, and we want to know not the angle that is involved with the 50, but the other angle. So what we would kind of want to do first is solve for y. Let's figure out what this angle would be, and let's use the same setup we used here. So if I solve for y, and I follow that step, y is equal to this one half the sum of 160 plus 50, and I end up getting 105, then the relationship between those two angles is that they're supplementary. I would subtract from 180, and x is simply equal to 75. Not too bad. All right, let's take a look at one here. This one, we're actually given what the angle is, but we're wanting to find this arc x. So we follow the same pattern, but you'll notice the values go in the different spots. So instead of x is equal to, it's actually 70 is equal to. So the angle measure is equal to 1 half x plus that arc of 38. Now there's a couple ways to solve this, guys. We can distribute the 1 half. I tend to just like to... Um, eliminate the fractions from the beginning and just multiply both sides by 2. If I multiply both sides by 2, 70 times 2 is 140. 1 half times 2 is just 1, so I'm just left with x plus 38. So 140 plus equals x plus 38. Subtract 38 on both sides and we get 102. Here, so we want to find this arc. This arc is created from this angle and this arc. So, okay, that kind of leaves us in a tough spot. We know that this is 94. So let's see, if that's 94, then this angle is 86. And then I could do the same thing that I just did over here. So 86 is equal to 1 half of x plus 58. That means 172 is equal to x plus 58 if I multiply both sides by 2. And x equals 114. Pretty simple. Let's look at these. If I want to find the measure of this arc, well, this arc and the relationship of this angle, if I know the angle is 110, then x is equal to 2 times that amount. So it's like you can go either way. You double the angle to get the arc, or you take half of the arc to get the angle. So in this case, the arc is 200, uh, I'm sorry, 220 degrees. Here, if I give you the arc as 280 and I ask you for the angle, 
and that would be the opposite. To go from arc to angle, we cut it in half, and it would be 140. Here, if I know that the angle is 115, but I want to find the measure of this arc. Now think about it. If this is 115, I know that this big arc here, y, let's call it, is 230. Now what do all of the arcs around a circle add up to? 360. So if I know that this is really 230, then I would do 360 minus 230 to get that arc of 130. You could also subtract 115 from 180 and get 65. And then if this angle is 65 and you double it to get the arc, you'll also get 130, which is exactly also the same situation you could do here. If I wanted to find out the measure of this angle, well, 272, that would mean that this angle here is half of it, which is 136. And then 180 minus 136 would give me 44. The other way you could do this is you could subtract 360 minus this 272 to get this arc, and then cut that arc in half to get that same angle. I hope this is a very easy video for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.